Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome back to a book haul. I am very excited to be doing my book haul for February. Honestly, it was supposed to be much, much smaller than this because I am uh, trying to be on a book buying ban. Uh, basically, it's not working. I didn't buy all of these books myself. Um, a lot of the books that I have here were given to me by a wonderful friend of mine, Clint. Um, so thank you to Clint for sending them to me. However, I did I did do some damage on my own. Um, and then I have a couple of Owl Crate, Owl, what? Owl Crate exclusives that we can talk about as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, y'all know that I'm not very good at synopsis, so if I know it, I will tell you. If not, we'll just breeze on past it. I don't want this video to be too long. So um, the first one I have here is a graphic novel. This is Monstrous Volume 1. Um, this is by Marjorie Lou, Lou, Lou and Sana Takeda. Um, I've heard really good things about this graphic novel series. I wanted to give it a try. I went to the last bookstore in LA and they had this there, so I decided to pick it up. Heard good things, um, saw it there. That was the only reason why I bought it. I only bought a couple of books when I went to that store, so I'm cutting myself some slack because I didn't do too bad. The other graphic novel that I picked up from there was um, Paper Girls Volume 2. I really enjoyed Volume 1 and I want to continue on with the series, but I hadn't had the chance to pick up the second one yet. And again, I was at the last bookstore in LA and I found this one and needed no other excuse to pick it up. Uh, this follows a very interesting sci-fi-y um, plot about these paper girls who are on the paper route and they are throwing newspapers at people's houses and during their newspaper shift, um, the world goes into utter chaos and there is an alien invasion and they are stuck right in the middle of it and it's just about these girls trying to survive. It was very interesting. The first book left off on a little bit of a cliffhanger so I'm really interested to see where it goes and I'm hoping that I still continue to enjoy it. All right, up next, um, from the same uh, day, I bought Heartless Volume... Heartless Volume something. Heartless. It's just a standalone by Marissa Meyer. Uh, I love Marissa Meyer's work and I really, really wanted to read everything that she's put out. Um, I honestly don't know anything about this book. I bought it just because of the author, knowing that I love everything that she has written so far. And I'm really excited to give this a try. I think this one is a... Um, yeah, the Queen of Hearts like backstory. Um, I am not a huge Alice in Wonderland fan and I told myself that I was never going to read an Alice in Wonderland retelling again but if Marissa Meyer has done it she must have done it well so I'm going to give it a try and hopefully I love it. All right next up are all books that I purchased myself either from the bookstore or I pre-ordered and again seeing as my usual hauls that I buy on my own are like 50 books a month this was pretty dang good for me. I'm just saying. Uh, the first one we have is The Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey. This is the second book in The Fifth Wave series. The Fifth, the fifth Wave follows um, a young girl named Cassie, I believe, and um, the world has succumbed to this alien invasion that has had four waves of disastrous things happening, um, a plague, um, there was these earthquakes that created huge, huge tsunamis and wiped out total cities and um, just different things like that to pluck off the population. And Cassie is on a um, journey to find her brother who she believes is alive. And she kind of runs into a whole bunch of pit stops and um, really hard things along the way. So it was an interesting book. I wasn't overly like in love with the book, but I decided that I was gonna try the second book in the series. And then if I didn't really enjoy it, then I would not move on with the third. So that is my stipulation. And I'm hoping that I enjoy it. This is actually significantly smaller than the first book. So we will have to see. All right, the next book we have is The Love Curse of Melody Mc... Inidi? Inidi? And I can never say the last name. It's an I something. Um, I picked this up because it was signed at the bookstore. Um, it also has a um, letter, a note from the author. It has some under the cover dust jacket art and the um, actual cover just drew me in. This has a wonderful, beautiful redheaded main character and you guys know how I feel about that. There's also a black main character. It's also queer. So I, uh, that was all the buzzwords that I needed to pick it up. I actually didn't read the synopsis. I just saw a couple of triggers and buzzwords that I saw that I saw in there that I really wanted to read. So I picked this one up and I'm really hoping that I enjoy it. Up next, we have a Coho book and you guys know that I absolutely adored um, It Ends With Us. And one of my really wonderful friends and clients there at the store recommended that I read Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. And she said that I need to read it and she loved It Ends With Us just as much as I did, then I need to read it. So I'm going to give this one a try. I have heard nothing but good things about this particular book and I'm ready to ugly cry. Um, who's, who's Who's right there with me after the month I had ugly crying I'm not opposed to it that's all I'm saying <laughs> up next we have a book that I already read um, I picked it up and read it pretty quickly after I bought it and that is The Upside of Falling by Alex Light this is um, a fake dating um, 
contemporary YA romance and it was really cute it follows a girl I forget her name already um Becca Becca and Brett um Becca is um having some troubles with her ex-best friend who is totally into all the guys and is very popular and is always in a relationship and so when she puts Becca on the spot and asks her about her relationship she says that she is in one even though she is not and the very popular football jock steps in and says that they are the ones well, they are dating and um he really wants to have a relationship um in his life to show his dad that he is living the best high school experience that he can and becca just wanted to stand up to her ex-best friend and they end up fake dating and of course it leads to more it always does it was very cute it was very sweet but there's also some triggers in here for cheating um in a lot of detail and um a abandonment of a parent so if that's something that triggers you i would definitely steer clear or go in with caution but it was in there however i really enjoyed it i like a contemporary romance that has a little bit more uh umph to it a little bit more substance and i really enjoyed this book i think i ended up giving it a four star it was a quick read i read it in one sitting and i really enjoyed it up next is a pre-order that i'm really embarrassed that i haven't read yet and that is payback by uh kristen simmons um <sighs> I was supposed to read this back in December when I got the e-arc through NetGalley because um, Melanie ended up giving Clint and I all e-arcs of it. And um, we got that from the author, obviously, uh, Kristen Simmons. She was our guest host for Spring and, uh, not Spring and Spring and Spring, Mary Bookmas. And I read the first two books and loved them. And then I planned on reading the second book. January got crazy. December was crazy. And then I fell into a slump and I just haven't picked this back up. But I am still really excited to read it. I'm so proud of the author for publishing the third and final book in this series. She has another book that's coming out, um, which is a sequel to a book that she has co-written and i'm really excited i want to read this and i want to give you guys all my thoughts i just haven't quite gotten around it to reading it yet but i will i promise i will <laughs> all right up next we're going to talk about books that were given to me by clint so again thank you to clint so much for sending these to me um i didn't need any more books but i'm not complaining because i all of these books sound absolutely amazing and i'm really excited to read them so the first three here are the first three books in the um mercy thompson um novel series this is a i believe a um paranormal smutty ish uh type of series and i've heard really good things i've heard that she is a badass female character and i'm really excited for that um i don't know what order this goes in but we have um iron kiss moon called and bloodbound uh, i've heard good things not only from clint but from other people about the series and so i am really excited to pick it up and give it a try but i actually don't know the synopsis so i guess we'll have to just jump in and see how I like it. <laughs> and again, Clint sent me another full series, which was amazing. And that is the Graceling series by Christian Kishore. We have Graceling, Fire, and Bitter Blue. The fourth book in the sp spinoff series, the part of this series just came out recently and everyone has been ranting and raving about it. So I'm really excited to have this series. I definitely want to give these books a try, but they are quite chunky. Um, I actually don't know anything about the series, but again, I've heard really good things. This is probably a booktube staple um, from here on out, I think. Um, almost everyone that I've seen that I've read, has read it, read it years and years ago, and it's still really highly talked about. So definitely want to read these. Don't know why they're so chunky, but I am going to get to them eventually. That is my answer to everything. I'll get to it eventually. 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 <laughs> All right. The next thing I have here is I hope you get this message. Um, this is a queer book. I know that for sure. I just don't really know the synopsis. Again, I didn't buy these. These were sent to me, and um, I've heard good things about this. I think this is more of a queer but also friendship group um it is written by uh farah nazi rishi and it's blurred by adam silvera so i really like adam silvera's work and if this is anything close to it i'm excited to um read that i believe this has something to do with a podcast or something like that i'm not really sure but i've heard good things and i want to give it a try then we have bone Cryer's moon by katherine purdy um i am getting the second book in the series via Alcrate, um an exclusive edition coming my way so i'm really excited that i got the first book in the series so that i can eventually read the both of them together um this follows a girl who has to kill her one true love that is all i know about this book i've heard mixed reviews about this one some people really lo loved it some people really didn't so i'm curious to see which side of the spectrum i fall onto but hopefully i really enjoy this again if i'm not knowing too much of the synopsis i apologize but again not a book i, I purchased for myself so i am so really excited for it though and i'm really hoping that i love it up next we have only mostly devastated by sophie gonzalez and what i heard about this book is it's um grease but queer and again the only trigger words I needed were Grease and Queer. So I'm definitely going to read this. Thank you so much to Clint for sending this over to me because I've heard really good things about this. I just hadn't had a chance to pick it up for myself. So I am really excited. Again, that's all I really know about the synopsis, but I'm hoping that I love it. 
All right, the next two books are books in a series that I have heard nothing about. It looks like these are a YA mystery series and um, they are called uh, How to Hang a Witch and um, Haunting the Deep by Adriana Mathers or Mad Mather, I'm sorry. And this is um, a YA mystery that has something to do with the Salem witch trials and how that is now prevalent in modern day. That's all I know. I read the synopsis a little while ago when I first received the books, but since then I haven't looked too much into these. These do sound really interesting though and very ominous and creepy, so I'm really excited to give these a try. All right, this last book that I'm going to talk about was given to me from Clint, I think. I think I'm right about that, but if not, Clint, feel free to correct me. Um, but it will lead into my Alcrate exclusive, which, which is great. So the first one I have here is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This is a book that's on my TBR for this month, so I'm really excited to read it. Um, I don't know too much about it. I know it's set at the sea. Um, I know it has some creepy, ominous vibes, but that's pretty much all I know. Um, I have heard good things about this book. I haven't really heard any negative reviews, but um, I haven't heard anything like necessarily raving like it's the best book they've ever read but I have heard good things so I'm excited to give it a try and um, this leads into my Owlcrate books because Owlcrate did send me the exclusive edition for the sequel which is All the Tides of Faith of course by Adeline Grace. Um, I'm really excited that I actually got the first book in the series because I, I got this without having ever read the first book and now I can binge them both hopefully if I like them. Um, I'm not very good at binging but I'm gonna try better this year. <laughs> That's a goal of mine. Let's let's hope. But um, again, this is the sequel, so I have no idea what this one is about, um, seeing as I didn't know anything about the first one. But um, I am really excited. This is a absolutely stunning, gorgeous edition of this book. Um, the side there is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the color breakdown. It is stunning. So I am really excited for this. Uh, the next Alcrate exclusive that I have is the February um, Alcrate um, exclusive book. So if you guys don't want to be spoiled or don't want to see it, uh, feel free to skip ahead. Um, but the uh, book for February was The Gilded Ones by uh, Namina Forna, and I'm really excited for this one. This one was on my most anticipated list of last year when it was supposed to be published last year, and then um, the dates got pushed due to COVID, so um, now the book is out, and I'm really, really excited for it. I was about to get my hands on a copy, like, uh, the end of, end, of, end of this month, but I'm so glad that I got it in an Alcrate because now I don't have to buy it. So um, I'm really excited. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in the overall outcome of this Alcrate exclusive. However, I am really, I'm still really excited to read this. This follows a girl who um, is a part of, is going to be a part of a ceremony that tells her what color her blood is and the color of her blood will determine um, her status in the world that she lives in. She's hoping that she'll bleed red, but unfortunately during the day of her ceremony, she bleeds gold which is supposed to be a signif signifier for a demon. And so she ends up getting outcast and she is basically going to die until a woman comes and offers her a way to escape and to fight in this army of women just like her. But she finds out that not everything is as it seems and she may have a lot more power than originally let on. So this sounds really good. I'm really excited for this. I love the representation on this book. So I'm really excited to get around to this one. And the very last book that we're gonna talk about today is my Alcrate Jr. Um, book. And that is, um, but uh, in in between by Rebecca K S and sorry, um, this is a book that sounds really interesting. It is a uh, middle grade mystery. Um, I don't really remember too much about the synopsis. Um, it has to do with uh, a girl next door who um, may have something to do with the disappearance of um, some individuals that lived in their family house years and years ago, but nobody knows how he disappeared or why or what organization um, had anything to do with it. But there are some clues that point towards the weird girl next door that may know more than she is letting on. So this one sounds really good. I'm really excited to give this one a go. I love a good middle grade and a middle grade mystery just sounds like something that'll be right up my alley. So I am really excited for that one. But that is the end of this haul, I think. Um, seeing as <laughs> I was supposed to be on a book buying ban, I didn't do great, but uh, it could have been worse. You know, it could have been worse. Um, I know you're probably saying, hello, Kehlani, where's the new Sarah J Mass book? Um, listen, I haven't bought it yet. I don't want to talk about it. I will be buying it uh, in the next couple of days, and so you'll see it in my March haul. But uh, I did not buy it in February because I haven't finished the series, so I was trying to be... You know, I was trying to have some restraint, but I'm going to buy it anyway, so I don't know why I waited. Anyways, that's it. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, that is the end of this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know down below if you have read any of the books that I featured in today's haul. Um, leave a book stack emoji to talk about all the book stacks that we have sitting at my feet. Not that I needed them, but um, that is the end of this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.